Okay. Hey everybody, I'm Phoenix Perry. Um, I moved here from New York uh, where I ran a nonprofit called Code Liberation Foundation and I taught at NYU Game Center, NYU School of Engineering, NYU Con School of Computer Science, and basically anyone that would pay me. Um, legitimately true. Um, so I ended up here because I had owned a gallery in Brooklyn for five years, focusing, at art, uh, focusing on art, new media science, and design. And I lost my gallery, and I wanted to do my PhD. And I was like, where can I do that? And I found a great school in London called Goldsmiths, where I am now faculty starting a new MA in indie games and experience design. If anyone is in the room looking for an MA in 2017, see me here. Um, it should be really fun. And so when I left New York, I had been doing this nonprofit with a group of wonderful women for several years called Co-Liberation Foundation. So I'm going to play some video, hopefully, maybe, possibly. I hear it, it's just really quiet. With a bunch of really wonderful women, uh, Nina Freeman, Jane Friedhoff, Kat Small, and myself, we started this thing. And as you can guess, we had like so much fun doing it in New York, and we had a ton of people. So I thought to myself uh, when I moved here, I was like, is it going to be possible for me to move the organization over? So I had a couple fits and starts trying to figure out how to do it. And recently, we just ran a successful seven-part series. Was any, am I missing any of the, I didn't see any of the Code Lib women. Are any of you in the room? No, not now. That's a shame. Um, but we ran a seven-part series with the VNA, Machines Room, and Goldsmiths, where we taught a chunk of 16 women to program games from scratch. And then they had an exhibition as part of Holly's, uh, sorry, of uh, Marie's Parallel Worlds exhibit at the VNA. So it was really, really fun, and a bunch of new games came out of it. And I thought I would just talk a little bit about the process that I went through uh, with that. So we, I was originally curious if we would be able to actually recruit women. It turns out we were able to get like 80 applications in, we only had 16 slots, which was really surprising and awesome, which means we're gonna be doing a ton of them again. And I, <clears throat> I think some of you maybe have seen or played any of these games. Um, but I think there's a lot of promise in London with the same kind of thing happening. And that kind of begs the question, like, if, it's, if I can do it, why, is it not, why aren't more other people doing it? Um, so I'll see if I can go on. So we did a bunch of things. We've sent for two years now. We've sent batches. Intel has given us generously a chunk of money to send women to IndieCade to present for the org and show all their games. So we've sent two chunks of women down to IndieCade. And these are some pictures from the VNA event that were awesome. Um, so I will show some of the games that came out of the workshop. Uh, that was a soft robots project, um, a massage game. It was kind of great, had a massage controller. Um, so all these games came out and I was amazed like how competent these women had, you know, become over the period of the, the workshop. Cat Mania was maybe one of my, one of my personal favorite games just because the cats hated me. Um, this was a game, um, Mimi made this and you had to find a, someone who'd be willing to give you a tampon in a bathroom. It was kind of hilarious. Um, and we just had a really, really nice vibe and a really nice group of folks come out. So I thought I would just tell you all that we're here and we've started doing stuff in London and that we exist now. <laughs>
And I'm really excited to be here and be doing more things. So other than showing the video, which was seven minutes of my talk. Um, <laughs> you think you could? Well, I've kind of, I've spoiled it now. It's all over. It's all over. It's spoiled. But does anyone want to ask me any questions about the org or anything? Thoughts? Ideas? Does anyone care? <laughs> Go on. Yeah, uh, the women who applied, like, were they totally from scratch? Like, what sort of backgrounds did you get? We had all kinds of people from backgrounds. So what we had to do, because it was such an amazing group, it was hard to pick people. Um, we had to create a grading metric, and then we had eight people rank them. So only people who got like a 72 and above got in the class. It was that competitive. But we took people with no coding skills. That was one of the, if you had been programming for years, you actually fell in the ranking. So <laughs> it was like, you've been coding for years. Minus 20 points. <laughs> Come to one of our parties. We'd love to know you. Come teach for us. But, uh, so that's kind of the way that we, we picked folks. And we had a broad spectrum of how we selected the, the women. And if we didn't take anyone in this room's application, it wasn't because you were incredible. It was because there were eight people. And some of the people I wanted did not get in. And some of the people that, like, you know. So Kiona is one of our... Young, lo lovely young um, women involved, Alice Casey, uh, Alice Casey, Alex Roberts, uh, CA, uh, Charlie Page. There's a, a group of us, and it's, it's going pretty well so far. I have good feels that we'll be able to do stuff. <laughs> Go ahead. If someone wanted to support the organization like financially or hardware or... Give me all your money! Seriously, just go to the webpage and click the donate button. That would be amazing, I will tell you. Yes, go on. What do you think was the most difficult part of it? Because it sounded like you were worried you wouldn't get many applicants and they got 80, so that was... I was actually worried that uh, we wouldn't get any applicants over here and there would be no interest. Like, that was a legitimate concern because we have a really tight community in New York and I mined straight out of my community. So, collaboration is an example of four women mining their friends. You know, it's like, hey, who do you know and who do you know? So it was the indie games community in New York. And then I, I knew no one over here. I was like, how am I going to tell people this is a thing? Uh, and uh, Marie was amazing for that. The VNA really helped us, I think, with finding people who might be interested. Because I'm super new and know no one. Um, <laughs> so that's how that happened. I was really worried we wouldn't have people at all. <laughs> Other questions? Thoughts? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just kind of interested in, like, what's the... Sort of target audience that you go for? Is it like sort of students or adults or do you try and get to schools? Like, do you have a range? Yeah, I think it's an issue of conversation. I give not a fuck about really young kids. Um, I hate children personally. <laughs> um, and I don't really care about the women who've already successfully gone through STEM degrees. What I'm looking for are the creative people who maybe have always wanted to learn to code but never had a way in, or the women that went into computer science and then got pushed out because the field was super toxic. So that's pretty much who Code Liberation is for. Um, I think there is a specific, after having done it a lot of times now and seeing the same person show up over and over and over, in LA, in Seattle, in New York, in London. I think there's a type of lady who that fits really well. Um, and I think it's because women kind of get pushed in a certain direction their whole lives. And by the time they're 21 or 22, if they want to learn to code, it seems like a staggering like amount of work, particularly if they've done like an arts degree, right? So. That's my thoughts. So mostly people who've come out of college already or are in midway through college. Um, we do have some science people, but not a ton. Mostly I want people to make art. Like I really want people to make weird indie games and art. I don't really care if they ever go work in AAA. I don't really care if they ever like go and work for some Silicon Valley startup. Really no care is given. But can they make their weird projects and tell the stories that they have in their voice? I have succeeded. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah, go on. Um, so I'm, I'm a teacher, I teach English, so mostly it's pulling apart things and kind of works with house. But how do you promote people being creative? What do you consciously do to make it that you're I don't even have to try. Um, 
to be honest, I think a lot of women have really interesting and compelling experiences that just sort of naturally form into games if they're in communities and they have the tools. Um, I've never even really had to think too much about that. Usually it's sort of, here's some great games, check them out, they're awesome. What do you think? Talk to these people and what are the experiences from your own life? And that's really what I care most about. Yeah, come on. What language or tools do you teach? I have taught everything. Um, so I have a lit degree, an engineering master's, and a computer science, and I worked in Silicon Valley. So I have a crazy background and I transitioned to being a designer or so. I know all the things. Um, but we've taught C++. I did like a nine-week C++ boot camp. I've taught C Sharp. We've taught JavaScript. We've taught Twine. We've taught Phaser. We've taught like over in New York over 2,000 women, and I think we're at like 50-some classes. So it, it's cool. We're, we're at eight classes in the UK and 16 women, but I have optimistic hope. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, we're done. We're done. Woohoo! All right.